Good evening. Welcome to tonight's school board meeting. It's Monday, December 14th, 2020, 6 o'clock. We're in the Citizens Holy Lives Day Board in the 1887 building. I'd like to ask, like to call the meeting to order and ask Mr. Pollock to Mrs. Fisher. Here. Mr. Gaynor. Here. Mrs. Ingersoll. Here. Mr. Martell. Here. Mr. O'Donnell. Here. Mrs. Ray. Here. Mr. Scarrow. Here. Ms. Grakowski. Here. And Mr. Reed will not able to join us tonight. We do have a quorum and we'll continue. I will note that this meeting has been noticed for state statutes. Do we have any community participation? Or would you like to do anything to read in, Jason? No. All right, we'll dispense with reading that. And go to banner presentation from the Durham Busters. Hi, my name is Lisa Mackis. I'm the general manager of the School Bus Company down here. And I apologize for the delay in me getting here. Um, but we wanted to just give a, a small token of appreciation for your partnership with us uh, through this pandemic. It has meant a tremendous amount to us, uh, all the driver sign. And uh, we really appreciate that you guys supported us through it and that we were able to support our drivers and um, keep them full through the end of the school year. And we weren't all our districts who did that, so we greatly, greatly appreciate it and just wanted to, to give uh, a little banner of thanks for it. We certainly appreciate it. We certainly appreciate everything that our bus drivers do and what you do to keep our kids safe and get them to and from school. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. I have people in the community saying, what a great idea. They didn't have kids in school, but they would see the buses out there and they thought it was fantastic. Yeah, so, the drivers really love doing food deliveries because it kept them in contact with a lot. Of, they tried to sign the drivers to areas where they drove. Oh, so they were sure. able to keep up with their kids. Yeah. So thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Thank have you a wonderful evening. You too. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lisa. Right. College and Career Academy student presentation. Hi. Uh, <laughs> They're virtual. <laughs> <laughs> um, good evening. I'm Kelly Demarath, and I'm the principal of the Career and College Academy at Gateway. Um, the Youth Belt students put together um, a presentation. <laughs> Mr. Trottier is here in spirit. <laughs> I am here. <laughs> Let's see, do we have some of the kids online there? No, no. Oh, they yes. they <laughs> included a video. I was like, All right. <laughs> Okay. And so uh, the first the first slides that they did, uh, they they did the team, so they put their names and then they put <laughs> Mr. Trottier and what was it, Alan, their construction <laughs> like the team is bigger. The team is bigger, but I have to say Mr. Trottier was very touched to be on the first the first cut of the team. So uh, the first team. Well, the first team. First team. <laughs> first wave. And so the Elkhorn Youth Build Project is, is a federally funded grant program uh, for the current college academy. And we, you know, the, the big shiny thing is we are uh, given the ability to build a home in the community for a family who traditionally would be able to uh, get a bank loan and, and purchase a home. And so we work with Community Action Incorporated of Rock and Walworth counties. They help us um, in purchasing the, the lot and then also um, helping us find a family because they do a lot of wraparound services. But for our program, we are 50% academic instruction, 40% hands-on construction training, and 10% career and life skills. Because while the big shiny thing is the house, the thing that will shine so much longer and further is the work that we do with the students. Because it is intentional work that we do and just even from the beginning, them selecting their career path and their strategic job placement plan, and then articulating that in the year of follow-up where the, the team works with them to, to really uh, fulfill their plan. So um, we have many partners who work with us. Um, we are just thankful for the, the community involvement that we've had. Um, there have been a lot of organizations who have been working with um, both our team and our students to help show them that there is so much 
um, you know, applicable skills and, and careers that could use the skills that they're learning. <laughs> we have some pictures. Uh, so from the when when you all were out there, we had our groundbreaking. We do have a foundation. They are rough framing, um, and we we are really getting the experience because it's cold. <laughs> it's cold and it's snowy, so they are really figuring out that it's very different to be on a site um, because there is no warm house. We have, they have like knocked on the van door and we're like no you have to go build a house <laughs> so uh we make sure that they are they are very warm and, um but they are they are loving it and one of the the key pieces of mr trattier's role in our job specialist position is that they're actually going to businesses and organizations and seeing the ways that they can apply the skills that they learn on the site to other organizations. So one was CCI, Corporate Contractors Incorporated out of Beloit. And they saw a variety of projects going on in this, in this industrial construction um, pathway. And Mr. Trottier, correct me if I'm wrong, two students were completely floored. Yeah, the, the, the students quickly realized the difference between residential and commercial construction. And actually two of them immediately after um, approached me because um, we've talked about youth apprenticeships and getting connected with CCI. So uh, about a week ago, two weeks ago, I had a uh, virtual meeting with two people in their HR. Um, they're looking into it, looking into this opportunity and um, the, but they and hopefully it'll come to fruition. And but in addition, they did jump on as one of our um, business partners right away. They were, I was very impressed by the, by uh, their company. And they actually got to see uh, the Lincoln Academy um, being built in Beloit. So it's a charter school in Beloit that they were actually able to see, uh, you know, just the, the ways and, and means that they're using in an industrial context uh, to build the school. So they, they thought that was really interesting. Is this the Lincoln Academy or? Mr. Trottier? Is, is this the Lincoln Academy? That, that is the view from the Academy. So, so CCI is building the Academy and then there's some additional work. I believe this is an old shopping mall that they're doing some work. They have three major projects going on in Beloit. This is considered one of their projects on this site. They're also uh, constructing the new Beloit Snappers Stadium, or what used to be called the Snappers, and then just, I believe, to the north of that, they were doing some uh, large-scale condo uh, construction. Uh, they finished one, well, they were roughing the inside in um, with electric and HVAC, uh, but they were getting close to that moving to the next phase, and then um, they had two more similar facilities that they were uh, building shortly thereafter. And that is the sign that you would see at the site. Um, the youth uh, introduced themselves to the neighborhood by writing letters and delivering them to all of the residents to let them know uh, what what we're doing on the site and why we're doing it. More pictures at the site. The students also went to Mode, uh, a metals fabrication company, and Adams Electric. Decision Club. Uh, we had a, a student um, interview for an apprenticeship because they are completing their six months on the bill on Friday. So they're all looking at how they're going to start articulating these skills. Um, and so we had a student interview and, and is looking to start their apprenticeship at Precision Club. Hmm. 
And so what's next? The build ends on Friday. Um, all of the students are registered in classes at Gateway Technical College. For the spring semester, they're looking at job placements and apprenticeships and to start the, the one year. Hello, everybody. This is El Carpini's Mills. And today we're just going to give you a couple facts about these mills. But the first reason is why did we join these mills? We joined these mills for the experience and the knowledge of what we get to know and what we get to do with hands on experience and training. And it's really cool because you also get a bonus with it, you get paid. And getting a check on top of the work is even better. And uh, how this bill has really changed us is we all been, in, at least for me, a couple of us didn't really know each other's movement from a couple of other states. All came in as a group. We built a really strong group of friendships. And it just built us and changed us. And yeah, and then how it changed was basically it gives you credit and from other public schools. I guess school is a little harder and then it's easier because you get credit to come to a group program. So that really helps out a lot or some people think of the long run. But uh, thank God for it. So, yep. <laughs> 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 four o'clock so looking forward to that yeah i've got my hand up i i found that little button but i didn't get called on <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm sorry in my life but uh, anyway i'll lower my hand now so if you notice um I, I like their speech, and, and one of the things that I've gone up to the uh, job site a, a couple times just out of morbid curiosity, uh, see how they're coming along, and I see that we're we're stopping on the 18th. Is there another group coming in then to continue with that? Yeah. Okay. Is it going to be another eight kids or so? Yeah, we are. We're really shooting for ten. Um, but yes, we have uh, interviews right now. The cohort will be selected by the end of the week. There will be the holiday break, and then they start mental toughness. And mental toughness is where we're really looking at those team building skills. What do you do if you know you have a conflict with somebody, but you still get to build a house? Um, and then also the safety certifications that we. We really need to make sure that everybody uh, passes and is certified before they go out onto the site. So that is the first two weeks of January, and then um, they are back out at the site. Well, some of the students that are involved right now continue and uh, build on their skills. So we had one student from the first uh, cohort where we, we had COVID and the shutdown continue on with uh, the building component of this cohort. Uh, all of the students of this current cohort, that is cohort two, have decided to uh, take Gateway Technical College courses and start um, internships and apprenticeships. In the heated environment. Right, <laughs> right. So they are, they, are, they, are, they are very excited to start um, uh, going to Gateway. Today we had our Gateway Day uh, at the CCA where we uh, we 
do a deep dive into like where your class is, let's look at the syllabus, let's go get your books and supplies. And so as a cohort, I, what Joey said, Joey Gomez said, they are very extremely close. And so you're, you're going to see that they, they all took like the same two to three classes together. <laughs> so they are, numbers. they are tight, they are really tight. So um, it's really neat to see them now start articulating their placement. And then I wanted to follow up as a old classroom teacher and, and thinking of engagement. I, I love the idea of, of linking and uh, the engagement part of the learning and uh, rewarding the application of their skills built and the knowledge acquired. So with the Elkhorn Youth Build, he said that they get paid. My question was, do they get paid for being in the cohort? Do they get uh, rewarded by hours worked? Or do they get some type of reward by an achievement and, uh, that they gained, such as the allotment would be $600 for the cohort, and if they get an A, they get a full uh, return on it. If they get a B, because I think we want to embrace the good habits of engagement and commitment. And I'm just wondering if, if we've thought of that and uh, a way to uh, continue with that. Um, because if you talk to a lot of employers, that's one of the biggest difficulties they're having right now. Absolutely. Well, that is, that's, thank you for, for bringing that up. Mr. Truen and I worked very hard on what we call the stipend schedule. And we want to reward students for achievement, mm -hmm. for hard work. So our stipend schedule um, not only rewards students for, for just daily work and attendance, so they have a daily stipend, but at the end of the week, they have an additional stipend that they can earn with hard work and good attendance. Mm -hmm. So there, there is that piece. Then we also have stipends for certifications, a high school diploma, getting their high school diploma, and then also uh, working throughout that whole follow-up year, there's additional stipends as they meet uh, criteria during that follow-up year. So I, I absolutely agree with you that we want to also model that you know greater work and effort does get rewarded um, but mm -hmm. intrinsically and extrinsically, so whatever, yep. whatever word you're going for, making sure that we're, we're hitting both. Yeah, because that's the big thing I look at is habits are hard to break, whether they're good or bad. So let's institute great uh, habits uh, right from the get-go. And some of these, these kids uh, really embrace that when they know that someone cares and rewards them. Absolutely. Absolutely, and, and one of the, the pieces that uh, Mr. Truen and Mr. Truen who worked on with us um, was a, uh, a timesheet that the students could submit and going through that approval process so they understood how within an organization somebody does get paid. Um, and so thank you for approving their pay. <laughs> they would want me to thank you. And then the, the second piece is uh, the fact that they had to have a bank account. And so one of the first things that they had to do with their families is, is go and open a bank account. So um, all the way around, I see that the program is really helping them think a little more broadly about adulthood and work. And they had to have a bank account because we do direct deposit. Right. Yeah. So, right. yeah. part of the, so they had uh, to have a social security card. Yes. So, yeah. And all that. Yeah. Good. Photo ID. Right. And right now they are working with uh, UW Extension on a life skills course. Okay. Where they're actually, they're going through the program called Rent Mark. And it's really about, you know, all of those what's next questions. Housing, um, more banking, and um, just responsible living. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. And Paul, I'm sorry. When I flip over, when I have the agenda up, I can't see you or your hand that's raised. So just. <laughs> you are correct. You know, you know, you know, from now on. We wish to dedicate three parcels of land as uh, Wisconsin School Forest. Right, I'd like to turn the time over to Mr. Cruz and Ms. Hart for the presentation. All right, uh, so again, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is 
uh, David Cruz, and um, most of you probably have not met yet, uh, but uh, Bailey Hart is uh, my cohort now. So um, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. <laughs> um, so uh, you guys have, have access to us. That's uh, we give you all the materials. Obviously, you guys are fully aware. We have spent a lot of energy into helping build our program, build our school district. Um, with the last referendums, we built tremendous facilities. And part of that is that we've also purchased some land that's that's become part of that concept. And I'll be honest, I probably sat a little bit kind of quieter because I know we, everyone had the big, you know, the idea for the buildings, all those types of items. And I was mentally kind of going, hey, there's some great opportunity with the land that's not being used. Um, and now this year, due to multiple reasons, due to not traveling to big conferences, having a second day teacher, now is the time to kind of felt like it was kind of good to be able to make some of those things happen. So. Um, Bailey and I have been working on uh, this idea about, you know, we want to create some outdoor land space and we got some different ideas. Uh, but one of them, and this is, uh, the idea is not new, because I remember when I was doing some teaching at the middle school, I heard people say, hey, it'd be cool to have a school for us, but it, it never really went anywhere as, as kind of going through those dynamics. Obviously, between uh, the land purchase along Market Street and now with the options uh, uh, program, we have some new land. Both of them have some wooded property. Uh, so those two pieces of property originally became part of the conversation. And then a little bit later, all of a sudden it started to dawn me is that we've got out at Tibbetts, there is a small chunk of wooded property that's underutilized as well. Uh, so collectively, uh, what we are looking at doing is that uh, we are asking the school district, as part of one of our, our goals within the program, is to uh, officially set aside uh, three parcels of property uh, as official school forest. Now, um, the slides we've got there, really, what does that mean for us? Uh, one is a school district. Uh, we commit to setting aside as a school force. Uh, we need to develop, we have a year to develop an educational plan so we can give, provide educational opportunities uh, to our students and community 4K through 12. Uh, we have to agree to manage it in a sustainable way, but we get a chance to work with um, our DNR state forester as part of that process as well. So, it's basically saying as a district, hey, we, we've got some property and we want to use this way to uh, teach people about forestry, forestry education, environmental science, and you know, we get to kind of decide where we want to go with that with that property. Key advantage to us by being a to be designated as an official school forest and then being put on the Wisconsin School Forest System makes us eligible for free trees and free seedlings and so new plant material plus the Department of Natural Resources, their state forester, uh, they will work with us. And so once we get this passed, uh, I'll file a paperwork and then hopefully within a, a month or two is that uh, I'll meet with our, our state forester and they'll go through and we basically have to put together a 10-year plan and we modify it and we kind of put it in place and make those things work. All right, did you want me to pull this up? And well, that's up you. I, I, I'm just... So I think you guys kind of go through, you can kind of go through this if you like. Yeah. Uh, but three properties, yeah, so right now, uh, Jason has up there, the one that is on the uh, on the Market Street, the one that's highlighted in blue. Uh, so when you think about, so it's to the along Market Street, east of Market Street, but on the west side of Highway 12 and Highway 43. So it's that entire stretch. Yes, it's not all forested, uh, but I worked with the uh, school forest coordinator. Uh, she's all, no, that's great because it's whether it's prairie and wetland, if we want to expand it, they are all okay with that. So it's all um, those properties. Uh, the part that's highlighted is the part that is uh, behind the options building. Uh, most of that is stuff that's, that has been forested. Uh, both those properties, there's not been many, there have not been very many people in there in the last probably 30 years. Uh, based <laughs> on some, some of the vegetation I see in there, it's, it's uh, pretty unique. But, um, so we're looking at managing that. Um, it does allocate. It's not going to the far uh, south edge there because of what that land purchase. Approximately that location is where they where that new property line is along that south edge. And then the last one is out at Tibbetts. And that when I was I reached out to uh, Mr. Frost out at Tibbetts, and that's kind of coordination. So it's that upper northwest corner. Uh, it's about three acres out there. Um, it looks like uh, I happened to be out there one day when Mr. Frost was there, so we chatted a little while. Uh, there's not much out there, but uh, Mr. Frost is pretty confident that uh, those, some of the trees that are planted there are ones that uh, he planted when he was uh, <laughs> uh, there at, uh, at Tibbetts. They're not very fast growing trees. So <laughs> part of our philosophy is that we would try to um, get some new trees in there pretty quickly to hopefully get that to expand a little bit. So 
Uh, those are the three parcels. Uh, like I said, we, we really see there's a lot of great opportunity. Um, you know, like some, and Bailey, when they're part of her prior work, first she worked with the Farm Bureau. Yeah. Illinois. Yeah, um, take that. Yeah. So um, when I was in college, I got to do um, an internship with our Ag in the Classroom program um, at my um, home county. And so with that, one of my jobs was to build these totes that covered all types of agricultural topics with um, relevant uh, books and literature and activities and lessons that were just essentially things that were ready to go that element that excuse me elementary teachers or teachers anywhere in the district um would be able to rent from us and borrow and we filled them and de delivered them or they could pick them up so the idea kind of behind this education plan that we said that we would have to develop and um put forth would kind of be modeled along that and Dave and I were talking one day and I said, oh, well, you know, I kind of have some experience with this. He's like, well, that's exactly what I was thinking we could do. So it worked out really nice that we're both thinking the same thing. Um, now, obviously, we have 4K through 12 that we hope to utilize this with. So we would have different grade levels. Um, and um, but, like I said, the books, the literature, the lessons that would target those specific um, age groups. Um, and they would change throughout time. It, it would change. We would do some trials. Um, you know, with leaf identification, um, there would be some wildlife stuff. We do have wetland areas, so we would incorporate some of that wetland information as well. Um, but it would essentially look like a tote that would get delivered, and then the teacher, that classroom teacher, would have access to all those things that they could work through. It was just already done for them. So when it comes down to it, there is a uh, there is a resolution where the lots of whereas and here tos and all those <laughs> items. Uh, but very simply, what's saying is that uh, as a district. Uh, you're saying that we own the property, uh, we promise to uh, manage it in a sustainable way and put together a, a an education program to make it being a useful outdoor educational classroom. Um, so again, without taking a lot more of your time, but I guess if you have any questions, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have or we'll go from there. Yes. Whenever I first saw this too, I was wondering because Christmas tree farms are forestry. Yep. Do you have any inkling that it's a possibility you might try something like that or not? That is one of the ideas that's floating around. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yep. Well, yeah. I'm on Christmas, the right track. Yep. No, yep. Uh, Christmas trees, uh, coniferous. Uh, the eventual plan will be is that we'll have to put together a committee, okay. which will have to decide, you know, what is our what is our land use plan for those areas. Okay. I didn't know if that because you're working with DNR and all that, if you had to have something in place before we sign this or after nope. nope. signing it that we have to do certain you know no, no. specific so things the only thing will happen is that uh, like so when, we, when we meet with the forester we'll we'll lay out some of our goals um and then the forester their job is to kind of help us lay out what that plan is and then go from there and again with all the things that we try to do within our department and you know as what kind of started this how can we build community with some of these things that we're doing and i think that that's a really awesome way to you know one teach our kids something share it with our school district and then also bring in the community piece as well. And the eventual goals we want to get in past the, the I've already been taking the forestry class. We've been out on the market street stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that was uh, pretty messy in there. And we're working on we're working on trying to clear some trails so we can get some access. But um, I mean they're, they, they've enjoyed their time out there. You also on the options one there's that the trail um it, it says access to the to the yes so, so Access to to what? Because you still oh. can get to that farmland. Yeah. I'm assuming it's farmland. Yes. Or... Well, well, couple couple issues. So one is that the that little field space that's on that north edge, uh, that is our property. It is a field, uh, but uh, in all honesty, is that uh, just the north of that, uh, if we want to be able to use that, propose that uh, the egg department will hopefully start using that a little bit uh, during the once that growing season is done. We really don't have any access with the larger vehicles. Unless you're going through the Cook Family's fields uh, during that time, so uh, right now that white area is it's 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 a non-mode grass area, so it's a grass area, so it just it has to be one of those things where we eventually need to maintain a little bit. Um, eventually down the road, it may not be a bad idea is that that north parking lot we might just put a a clear path through there to get that easier access as well. But again, just because so right now it's a grass area. Is that, okay, that land is not rented out. 
to be farmed right now. A lot of uh, times when you buy lamb, it's already been being yeah, farmed. It was corn a couple years ago. Yeah, a couple years ago it's corn. Uh, it's an extra well this summer. Uh, this summer the uh, it got planted this year. Um, <laughs> yeah, as we go through that, but that's okay. But um, but so that yeah, the long story there. <laughs> um, not a bad day. But uh, oh, please. yes. But so that the concept is that it used to be wasn't heavily used when St. Pat's owned it. Uh, you know the, uh, the Cook family uh, sometimes runs, sometimes they the uh, the church um, used it for a couple couple years. Uh, but again, it was kind of underutilized, and it's kind of a wet area, which okay. makes it sometimes a little difficult to. Okay. So we do have plans though for that as well, mm -hmm. other yes. than the forest. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's that's why I was wondering why do we need to get to it if they're planting from the yeah. other side? Yeah. If you if, uh, if you look at all the empty land space, I got a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good to hear. I think this is great. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. We just need approval of the formal resolution, yeah. and again, it one of the things that we checked is it doesn't. It provides us with access to a lot of resources, development from the instructional site. It also doesn't lock a school board in 20 years from now if they determine they need a different use. So okay. That's good. Any other questions for why is that good for motion? I move to approve the resolution and dedicate the three pieces of land described in appendixes A through C, totaling 32.7 acres. And the school for as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. I move and seconded to approve the resolution and dedicate the three parcels of the land described in Appendix A through C, totaling 32.7 acres as Wisconsin school forest as presented. No problem. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Hayward? Yes. Mrs. Ingersoll? Yes. Mr. Martell? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mrs. Ferro? Yes. Ms. Grakowski? Yes. All right, motion carried. Thank you guys very much. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for having us. Nice meeting you guys. Thanks for having us. We are after a meeting, so thank you guys very much. Thanks for having us. Approval of our minutes, regular session from November 23rd. Thank you. Any questions on those? Comments? Concerns, not your mark, I mean. Otherwise, I, 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 I move to approve the minutes of the November 23rd, 2020 regular session school board meeting as presented. Is there a second? Second. We move to second it to approve the minutes of the November 23rd, 2020 regular session school board meeting as presented. Roll call. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Gayhart? Yes. Mr. Ingersoll? Yes. Mr. Martell? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Kelsey? Yes. Mr. Carroll? General other fund bills? The general other fund bills this evening covers checks number 141542 through 141680, wire numbers 515 through 537, ACH check numbers 154 through 177. An option of renovation wire numbers 499 to 500 and a combined amount of $985,242.50. Then there's a memo providing some information on several of the bills, then a copy of the treasurer's report for the month of November. Questions for Mr. Chairman? I just had one question. What um, What is the Otis? Um, software. The other software is the software that we purchased last year for the elementary and uh, possibly future middle school standards based report card and, and instructional um, um, warehouse tool for the staff. Got it. So that represents the renewal for that. Other questions? Hearing none, looking for a motion. I move, I move to approve. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I move to approve the general and other fund bills of December 14, 2020. Check numbers 141542 to 141680. Wire numbers 515 to 537. ACH check numbers 154 to 177. 
and options renovation wire numbers 499 to 500 in the combined amount of $985,242.55 as presented. Is there a second? Second. The move and second to approve the general number fund bills of December 14th, 2020, checks number 141542 to 141680, wire numbers 515537, ACH check numbers 154 to 177, options renovation, wire numbers 499 to 500, the combined amount of $985,242.55 as presented. We'll call it. Mrs. Fisher. Yeah. Mr. Gayhart. Yeah. Mrs. Ingersoll. Yes. Mr. Martell. Yes. Mr. O'Donnell. Yes. Mrs. Ray. Yes. Mr. Scarrow. Yes. Ms. Krakowski. Yes. Motion carried. Report and discussion item student report. Yes. <laughs> So at the high school, the student council organized a giving tree for Twin Oaks Homeless Shelter. And fortunately, all of the ornaments were gone within the first two days. So we were really happy to see that. Um, this week, we are doing a holiday dress up meet. Um, and academic awards were passed out on Tuesday during our student success time. At the middle school, um, AVID students packaged 255 bags of meals for Children's World Impact. Um, the student council at the middle school is holding a fundraiser by selling candy canes during lunch. And the forensics team began practicing this week. Um, at Tibbetts, the Tibbetts PTA sponsored a virtual giving tree, and it only took 11 hours for all of the gifts to be taken off the tree. Um, at Westside, students learned how to code robots that can detect colors as it moves along a path. And the PTA is encouraging families to use Amazon Smile as they buy Christmas presents, um, so part of those proceeds go to Westside. Um, at Jackson, the PTA is selling craft kits as a fundraiser, and the student council is hosting a 12 days of dress up fun. Um, at Options, they have one more week of uh, classes left as a temporary building, and students learn the importance of vitamins and reading nutrition facts by extracting iron from cereal using magnets. Um, Options High School was awarded a $1,000 grant for suicide prevention. Um, and then at the Career College Academy, uh, like she said, today was Gateway Day, where they learned about opportunities within Gateway Technical College, and they partnered with Hour of Code, MKE Tech Hub, and Gateway Technical College to participate in the Hour of Code and Computer Science. Week. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Rita Gavis, and I'm the Director of Special Education and Pupil Services. And tonight I have on my Pupil Services hat. And tonight I want to talk to you about um, how we continue to strengthen our multi-level systems to support the new area of social and emotional learning throughout the district. Um, first of all, um, just a reminder that by the end of this, we want to understand how our multi-level systems of support and SEL have developed, what has happened over the last five years, and then what our latest and newest um, curriculum curricula that we are using in all levels. I want to talk to you about what we've come on this year. Just three terms I want to make sure you're uh, familiar with is our tier one, which means our universal level of instruction for all, and that's what all students get. Um, tier two is when we add some targeted supports for students. And tier three is intensive and usually that's just for fewer students. And um, that's usually individualized. And this year, we've really worked on uh, increasing our Tier 1 universal instruction in social-emotional learning for all students. <clears throat> Quick reminder about what SEL is. It stands for social-emotional learning. And it's an integral part of all human development, as well as our educational system. And students are involved in social-emotional learning throughout their day and throughout all of their years while they're in school. And emphasis being on their self-awareness, their ability to manage themselves emotionally, um, their social awareness and interacting with other people, relationship skills, and then how do they make responsible decisions. So where do we start? Five years ago, we had a lot of good things going on, and we did a lot of really good things um, back in the 15, 16 school year, but there really wasn't a lot of structure to what we were doing, a lot of direction. In 16-7, we started uh, trying to look at this in a more uh, systematic, systemic approach. 
And we, uh, and that was the same time the Department of Public Instruction came out with their mental health framework. And we adopted that and started using that to look at our entire mental health framework in the school district and social emotional skills uh, falls within that mental health framework. In 1718, we continued to build and work on our framework. We added a tool called MeMoves uh, for uh, teachers in our district, and we promoted a lot of staff self-care that year. In 1819, our focus was on trauma, which again is part of that mental health framework. And um, all those things listed on the right-hand side were things that people, uh, staff engaged in as far as training and building their knowledge base again. And that was also the year that we partnered with uh, the county and um, brought on our Handle With Care program. And all our staff received uh, training in trauma sensitivity. And uh, the police and the sheriff's department partnered with us for our Handle With Care calls for when someone in law enforcement goes to a house and then our staff is informed, or not all, the entire staff, but the staff that work with the kids, and they're just told, please, don't have an extra special eye on this kid today. <clears throat> so then um, last year we went and started a three-year implementation plan uh, to implement our life-ready competencies or those social emotional learning competencies. And as you looked at this, uh, SEL can be looked at in the classroom from a three-legged stool. Uh, one leg of the stool is a supportive classroom environment. Second leg of the stool is integration of SEL into instruction. And then the third leg is explicit SEL instruction or that direct instruction of social emotional learning skills, um, social emotional skills, just like we would teach math or we teach reading. Um, SEL is not always incidental. We learn or learn at home. And so we there's times when we have to directly teach these skills to kids. So last year, we started at the tier one um, universal level, and we emphasized that first, the far left leg of the stool there, which is the supportive classroom environment, which we really emphasized with all teachers, building that safe, secure environment within the classroom and creating strong relationships with our students. And we saw when we went into remote learning then last year, the virtual learning, how important that was. And again, teachers had to reestablish those strong relationships online with kids. And our staff did an amazing job doing that because our participation in virtual learning was really very good. And much of that, all of that credit goes to those teachers who form those strong relationships with those kids and create soft, uh, uh, safe, and secure environments within the classroom for those kids to attend. Uh, go back one just to make sure. Oh, and at that time last year, we also did an audit of our explicit universal instruction in SEL, which is that front leg of the stool. So after we did that, we, uh, oh, this is still last year. So these are some of the other things that we worked on last year. Um, we, we got money from the mental health grant. Um, we piloted uh, a um, screener for um, social emotional learning. We increased and expanded our availability of credence counselors to come into the building and we spent more money on that. Um, we've organized our tier two strategies, which is group work. And um, like I said, we really worked on the relationship and building a culture that was safe, secure for our students. We also began our Hope Squad, which is a peer-to-peer -peer intervention program for, uh, for suicide prevention. We began that last year as well. <clears throat> So this year, uh, we really wanted to emphasize that tier one universal instruction uh, at, for all students at all levels in all schools. And so what we added, um, due to the mental health grant, we've been able to add quite a, a few pieces of curricula. Uh, at the elementary level, we have implemented something called zones of regulation, where kids learn to identify their emotions and learn to identify emotions in other people identify how their body feels, and then learn strategies to manage their emotions. At the middle school level, we are uh, using what's called the second step curriculum. And what's nice about this is that this is a continuation of the second step curriculum that the school counselors are already using at the elementary level. And then at the high school, we were able to purchase 
um, uh, a curriculum called Character Strong. And all these are aligned with the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction SEO competencies and fall within the capsule model that we're using. So at the elementary level, uh, well, really at all three levels, um, these lessons are made by the school counselors, social workers, school psychs, um, through the people services team, and they're prepackaged and then they go out to the general education teachers. And then at the elementary level, they're worked into the basic academic time. In the middle school, they are worked into the win time, and at the high school, uh, they're doing that that during that student success time. So I'm sure you've seen mm -hmm. some of those lessons, right? Yeah. And um, so this is a way to ensure that all students are getting it. And what we're also doing is we're building um, the capacity of our general education teachers at the same time, because they're involved in presenting the lessons to the students, but it they don't have to do any extra work. It's all been pre-made and given to them. It's interesting when uh, uh, the eighth teacher was talking about making the modules and you know the totes and they're ready. Well, this is kind of what we've done: package things electronically for the general education teachers. So <clears throat> the theory of action that we're working under is uh, that we want to build strong foundational support and plan uh, for implementing SEO, which I think we have over the last several years. Um, strengthen our adult SEO competencies and our capacity which we are continuing do, doing, especially now in light of COVID, this year has been stressful emotionally on a lot of teachers. And so supporting teachers emotionally by different things that we decide to do and things we decide not to do as administration, I think it's been very helpful. Um, promoting SEL for all students. And then we wanna be able to reflect on our data for continuous improvement. And just keeping in mind that, you know, we're not looking for a final product here. This is a process and that is ongoing and throughout all of our lives. I'm sure there, when I look at myself right now and I look at relationships that I have in my life, certainly the relationship I have with my husband 30 years ago is not the same as the one I have now. We've all emotionally changed and grown and developed throughout our entire lives. Hopefully we're giving them that strong foundation to build on here at El Dairy School District. So next steps, we're gonna hit that third leg of the stool next year. Uh, we wanna increase our use of data we want to solidify our tier two system into systems. And we want to, that third leg of the stool there is to integrate SEL instruction into just instruction. So how can every general education teacher, if they're delivering a math lesson, how is it that you're integrating social emotional learning within to that lesson? Or if it's a science lesson or a phi ed lesson, you know, what are the competencies that you can work on while you're delivering instruction in other curricular areas? And of course, I am just the messenger here. So much work has been done by such a large group of people. Um, I really I want to thank Amy G and Sarah Bosch for their um, partnership in all of this. They really, you know, they are the curriculum experts and they have worked really hard with uh, the teams to be able to package this and get this out to the general education teachers and the counselors, psychologists, social workers, and the administrators at all the schools and the general education teachers who are putting those lessons out to the uh, students. I have to thank all of them because it's uh, uh, really been a great team effort. So I'm just merely the messenger here. Any questions? No, great, great plan and uh, such an important topic and uh, glad to see it's been implemented and it's you know, this, this is the start of it, and it's um, something that <clears throat> I'm glad that we are engaging in at all levels. Uh, it's just a, a very important um, thing for all students. I'm glad it's touching everybody, and that we have the specific steps in place for um, those individuals that need that special guidance. So thank Great. you. I think uh, the thing that I, I the tagline that I use all the time: we cannot tier two and tier three ourselves out of ineffective tier one. You know, they're inadequate tier one. And I think this year, working at that universal level, increasing that curricula and um, having it go to all students, and it's like in the three elementary schools, it's the same. Um, it just, it, I think that's really going to help us help our kids. I think it's really going to help our kids. And, you know, we should see, it, you know, hopefully a decrease in kids who have to have small group instruction at the tier two level or individual counseling at the tier one level or at the tier three level. 
um, there's, you know, there's been some struggles by some kids because of COVID and the isolation yeah. and yeah. different family yeah. dynamics. And so we are, you know, utilizing our tier three with our previous counselors and our school counselors are busy as well, but I think we're doing a good job. So thank you, Mr. Sparrow. I've seen it as a parent trying to have the kids home more. I mean, even doing a math lesson with this, like how do we incorporate that? My son doesn't want to write down every step. He just wants to stick to the bottom and teaching those life skills with no implications. And you know, we're gonna write it all out. We're gonna go through it all. But like, kind of, I mean, it had really nothing to do with math. It was just you know, <laughs> right. so how do you get it done and let's go and move on. And you know, yeah, how do you do that as a math teacher? When you see kids are frustrated or right. you, see, you know how do you right. bring them there, back? It was more about emotion. And we're incorporating a lot of things that I know at the high school level when we went to the um, the five period day, you know, the teachers had to learn how to give brain breaks and those oh, yeah. types of things. Brain that's all part of you yeah. know that social emotional learning, learning how to manage you right. know your brain and control your anxiety and your boredom and all those other things. You know, so we're seeing it a lot now that the kids are on the screen, especially at home, because one minute they're on and the next minute they're in the hallway and they're gone and they're doing something. I'm like. I thought you're in science class right now. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I just, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, keeping them, you know, on task and so how, how yeah, do you, been, how do we take a break? What's an appropriate right. break? You know, we want them to learn how to um, take brain breaks and and control their emotions in healthy manners because the the other alternatives are, you know, drugs and right. alcohol or other things that you know right. are going to give their brains break that we don't want them to engage in. And right. then we're dealing with more tier two and tier three interventions, right? And let's be preventative in nature rather than intervening after there, you know, there's been troubles. Okay. <clears throat> so I really appreciate the support that the school board and the district has really had. And Mr. Taddock's been a great supporter of all this. Um, I really appreciate the movement that we've had. And I also, um, Kelly Demarath, I should, I'd be remiss in not mentioning her. She was the one who applied for the school-based mental health grant that we got for the last two years, which has been great, and we will be applying again this year. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Right. Options and innovations. Okay, uh, they are moving right along. It's always amazing how much they get done in the last two to three weeks. <laughs> I'm going to look because we didn't extend our lease. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, it is looking quite a bit different. They've got quite a few of the windows in. The, the brown will be gone. Those are more pieces of glass that are yet to arrive. Um, but it, the building will have quite a bit of a, a different feel when you've got Florida ceiling uh, windows in there. That's great. Uh, you'll have a new fascia around the, you know, around the top. That's not on yet, but uh, that metal paneling will. Start getting it's all pretty soon. Seventy years ago. Good thing. The lockers are all in the process of getting the repainted. Yeah. No um, shamrocks. No, the shamrocks was actually quite. I'm sure it was very creative at the moment when the person put the vinyl or the latex paint on the lockers, but it made repainting them kind of a hassle mm -hmm. in the prep work for that. Um, the cabinets look. Great. Um, they're like a gray wood yeah. um, tone, but they look very nice. The cabinetries yeah, in the, the rooms. Uh, again, when the rooms are done, they're going to look brand new because they'll have all new flooring, all new ceiling, and the walls will be you know repainted and the boards um, redone. Um, so they're not quite there yet, but it's getting there, and um, <clears throat> they're confident they'll be done on time with. The majority of the work. There'll be some work that's still going to be ongoing after they move in and begin utilizing it. Um, the gym, I think, is the last. You know, there's a lot of staging in there, and then once everything else is done, I, I think that'll be the last area. Mm -hmm. um, that's again the kitchen area, but all the infrastructure, the new piping, the electrical runs, all of that's pretty much done, and they're getting into finishing up. So we took all that old flooring off the kitchen. The all the flooring's gone. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we're doing it, do it now before the kids are in. Yeah, Bill and I were talking about that the other day, and we're so 
grateful that this you know referendum passed and we're able to just get it all done because trying to piecemeal yeah, this together been, from right. year after year i mean it, it's very expensive work to get it all done but we will have a like new um, building you know a fraction of that cost so it's uh, yeah so we took great. out we took out all that old ceiling we did good that was another thing that really you know i had a hard time with yeah everything's abated everything's gone the basement we filled in the lower part oh, of the did. basement oh okay good yeah, that's all filled in so no more stuff it has been said i was using yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah they should yeah. have all the flooring but they hope to have all the flooring done maybe by the end of this week. Or oh, really? The epoxy floor. The epoxy, the ECT, and the classrooms, everything. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if they make that, but that's their goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely want to take a tour when we're done. Yeah, I think we'll have to plan an open no, house no, or a tour or something like that. Right. There's right. a lot of people that want to go. There. <laughs> no, I meant because I wonder if they would come out in. All right. And you know, as recently I've read more posts or social media griping in relation to the old Lakeland school and it yeah, just I have reinforces yeah. I'm glad I am that we're able to make use of and oh, right. bring this school back up to speed. Yeah, I think I US think neighbors space. will appreciate it, you know, as well as other people who went there for yeah. for school. Yeah. All right. Jason. Yes. I did see that when you're on um, H there, that there's still a sign that says, when the arrow that says to St. Patrick's School. So oh, I wanted to make sure yeah. that gets changed. <laughs> and then the road sign? Uh, the road sign? Oh, yeah, yeah. by the city. Is it city owned, probably? Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I might want to ask them to update those. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to the COVID updates. I mean, these links are here for you to look at on a daily basis. These get updated and they change hour by hour. So they're only as good when is when Jody updates at eight o'clock in the morning <clears throat> that day out. So um, roughly though, last time when I looked at Web EOC this afternoon, we basically have about 96 people quarantined and or isolated due to COVID. I think it was 10 who uh, were positive uh, with COVID. Those are the numbers from the district. We're seeing, you know, I was really disappointed last week, to be honest, and actually a lot of them came out right after my weekly update on that Friday where we had instances of people who had to get quarantined. And to be frank, if the families had followed the procedures that we'd outlined, the kids wouldn't have had to have been quarantined. Um, parents sending their kids sick when they were sick or parents sending their kids sick when after the kid had been sick and gone and gotten tested for COVID and then sent them back the next day while waiting for the test results. So it's frustrating um, when you have to go and tell a family that your kid's got to be out for the next X number of days. And I don't know, we just need, we need families to do a better job of being over, not even overly, just all of the guidelines that we give you and do what we ask, and it would significantly reduce the number of people out of the right. um, So that's a little frustrating to be frank. Um, our school data sheet, you can see, and I think we'll go back down over the break again, but if the general public's behavior doesn't change, what I am concerned about is there we go. Um, you know, we ran a long time at those lower rates, so that's because our the rates within the community and the county were low. Right. Um, then we saw those rates in the county and the community really spike up um, leading into that Thanksgiving time. That's why we went to that remote learning time and we did drive them back down as we thought we would, but you can see we're back up, you know, in that hundred range. And if our community rate, our community rate has dropped as well, but if it goes back up, there's, you know, likely we'll see this rate go up as well. And just so the, the, the board has an awareness of it, there's certain segments of our
staffing group, and one right now that the bus company stretched really thin because they have a number of people out due to quarantines and or um, COVID. So even this afternoon, they had to double up a couple routes. So you may hear things along those lines. That's probably our most vulnerable infrastructure that we have is from that busing. Now, you know, there's things we can do doubling up routes or, you know, kids arriving to school late. Not ideal. It's better than closing down school altogether, but um, you know they just don't have a large pool of subs, and you have to have special licensure. You can't just right. put people off the street to go and drive them. So that's where we're at right now. Um, again, I, I think you know we'll make it through the, the week no problem. My goal and my hope is that we don't have to go remote uh, again for the remainder of the year. I'd like to be face to face, uh, and I, I think we could make it, but we do need better. You know, cooperation for the right. families, and I don't know, you know, doing a video me message. I thought about coming to the board, and if we have families and perhaps putting something in place that if a family blatantly disregards the protocols, maybe they need to be quarantined for a month. Meaning you're online because we can't trust you not to disregard the protocol. But I don't once, know what but else. Once they've do. already had it. We don't see a lot of reinfection, so it's kind of that's kind of a negative in a way, like yeah. double negative. I know. It's me just I, I know. No, I, I, <laughs> no, no, I'm being frustrated. Right. Being very, very frustrated, and, and I, I understand that. Yeah. I don't want to punish the kid. Right. The parents say. Right. The parents of schools, but I feel it's like I don't. I mean, you can't really give them community service hours or fine. Right. Either, but. Um, and in part of it, when you have a large family, my family just went through it. I think most people know that I had COVID. We fortunately were able to isolate and separate. But like with a family of five, it's very easy that if we have been able to separate and make sure that nobody else got it, it very easily could drag out well over um, sure. right. from one to the next and so forth. And, and I would say a lot of people, it's very innocent, and I think what makes it difficult is the symptoms manifest very mildly in the kids. Right. And so it's like, oh, it's probably not that. Um, and they go ahead and, you know, send them back. Um, or the kid, you know, really wants to be in school. Nobody wants to be home. But when the rates are as high as they are, it definitely had increased the likelihood of it being COVID. So um, this is good. We're at 90.11, which is critical. A couple of weeks ago, I believe we were in the 250 range um, for the Elkhorn area boundary mm -hmm. yeah. on our rate per 10,000. So it's down quite a bit. That's good. And hopefully that'll continue. Any question on the COVID numbers? Yeah. All right. Um, that's all I have on the COVID. I know it's been three days since she was tired one day, so it's just, you know, it's, it's one of those symptoms. So I got there, and it really wasn't that she was tired, it was just that she was kind of a black day or something. And it's hard. I mean, my youngest, yeah. Yeah. my youngest has been home three different times for 72 hours, and that's a lot of school. That's his first time here. And then on top of that, he had a quarantine. So he's messed. You know, quite a bit. And I get it. In the old days, you know, with that same situation with my daughter, if you're tired, I would have said, well, just send her to school. Yeah. You know, you need to just go to school. But that right now, you just can't do it. Yeah. All right. There, I feel better, I think. Um, <laughs> no, I, I did too. I feel better. Huh? All right. All right. Recommendation, district administrator, personnel. No. Okay, personnel recommendations. We have the retirement of Lori Mullen. I want to thank her for all of her service. She is currently serving as the head custodian for Westside Elementary. She'll be um, retiring on March 19th. And then we have the resignation of John Espinoza, who's been uh, serving as a custodian at Jackson. His last day will be December 18th. I want to wish them both the best. So we have the appointment of Kaylin. Berga is a cook's helper of the high school. This will be a new uh, position. That's all I have for the personnel. Yeah, I'm looking for a motion to approve personnel sheet. Second. 
I move to approve the personnel recommendation sheet for December 14, 2020, including new employment contracts, conditions upon passing the background check and district mandated drug screening as presented. Is there a second? Second. So moved and seconded to approve the personnel recommendation sheet for December 14, 2020, including new employment contracts, condition upon passing the background check and district mandated drug screening as presented. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Gayhart? Yes. Mrs. Ingersoll? Yes. Mr. Martell? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mr. Scarro? Yes. Ms. Grakowski? Yes. Motion carried. School gifts? School gifts. I do not have any gifts to report tonight. 2021-22 budget development calendar. Can we just finish the last budget? I say that. We did. Year. <laughs> <laughs> it's a never ending process. It seems that way. So traditionally the boards approve a, a calendar, a planning document basically as we start the process of working on our annual budget. So this is the 21-22 school budget. Um, the dates on here were updated to reflect you know, new calendar dates, but the process is very similar to previous years. I did include in here, uh, traditionally we've had kind of that March uh, get together a retreat. So I did put a date in there. I think it's the second Saturday of March if the board's interested in continuing with, with that process. Yeah. Um, one of the things I've, I've, I've kind of, as I was sitting here, I kind of titled this uh, the recovery budget. It's, it's, it's kind of the term I started to use um, because hopefully we'll be back to regular operations um, all around. I, I think this might be um, because we're entering a new state budget for the next two years. Um, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty with funding at the state level. So it's going to create probably a lot of unknowns for us as we enter this process. Yeah. Um, but that's not totally, you know, unusual and that there's certain information we don't know anyway, but I, I think this year is going to be potentially even more of a challenge simply of that, because of that uncertainty. And I think that creates a, a conservative approach across the board, especially at the state level, simply because they don't know what funding is going to look like at the state level. So my guess is our typical time frames of making decisions may have to be moved back simply because of it, so, right? we'll see how it goes. Any questions on the calendar? Mm -hmm. All right, so I need to approve the calendar, looking for a motion. I move to approve the 2021-2022 budget development calendar as presented. Is there a second? Second. I move and seconded to approve the 2021-2022 budget development calendar as presented. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Gayhart? Yes. Mrs. Ingersoll? Yes. Mr. Martell? Yes. Mr. Adamo? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mr. Scarro? Yes. Ms. Grakowski? Yes. And I noticed uh, Mr. Reed joined us. Mr. Reed? Yes. All right. Motion carried. Second reading of uh, new and revised policies. Okay, I have not received any further feedback regarding any of the policies, so unless there's one that you'd like to specifically um, discuss or review, I, I entertain the motion. Hearing none, looking for a motion. I move to approve new policy employment of personnel for athletics slash extracurricular activities, revised policy 420. School admissions and 443 Elkhorn area student conduct, and to delete policies 535.2 extracurricular duty assignments and 535.2 rule coaching assignments as presented. Second. Is there a second? Second. Is there a move and second to approve new policy employment of personnel for athletic extracurricular activities, revised policies for 20 school admissions in 443 Elkhorn Area Student Conduct and to delete policies 535.2 extracurricular duty assignments and also delete 535.2 rule coaching assignments as presented. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Gayhart? Yes. Mrs. Ingersoll? Yes. Mr. Martell? Yes. Mr. O'Donnell? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. Mr. Scarro? Yes. Ms. Grakowski? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Any announcements? 
All right, uh, next board meeting will not be until January 11th, 2021. 2021. We like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really just a reminder, we do have a closed session to review uh, school safety drill summaries. And uh, we were recognized it was published today by from Project Lead the Way for our community service yeah. during the COVID time frame as a district of a month in December. So um, that's we posted out on social media related to that. So that was quite an honor to be received that national honor. So and it was circled around our food distribution program that we did for the entire community, the adults and the kids. And, Partnering with the, the bus company and so forth. All right. All right. Well, this was likes to be a closed session. Looking for a motion to adjourn closed session. I move to adjourn the closed session pursuant to the Wisconsin State Statute 19.85 for one for B to review the written evaluations of the school safety drills. The school board will re reconvene an open session for action as appropriate regarding closed session business and or to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved and seconded to adjourn a closed session pursuant to Wisconsin State Statute 19.851D to review the written evaluations of the school safety bills. The school board will reconvene an open session for action as appropriate regarding closed session business and or to adjourn. Oh, Mrs. Fisher. Yes. Mr. Gayer. Yes. Mrs. Ingersoll. Yes. Mr. Martell. Yes. Mr. O'Donnell. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Ray. Yes. Mr. Scarrow? Yes. Mr. Drakowski? Yes. And Mr. Reed? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, everybody.